Hey, everybody is a, you know, old type of struggling hero would be trust because old I'm always <laughs> a shy. Everybody should win from that. I don't know. <laughs>Okay, so hello, I'm Andrea Sabo. I'm a senior marketing professional, have been working in marketing and PR areas for the last 32 years actually. Uh, and currently I am the uh, development and fundraising director of Bato Tabor, which is a Hungarian charity uh, where we are dealing with uh, seriously ill children and try to recreate and give them back their mental health through a scientifically proven method. So when you say business, my first association is, is people, because it's indeed a relationship, hopefully a long-term relationship between human individuals. Therefore the second thing which comes to my mind would be, would be trust, because all of us want it to be a long-term relationship and that can not only be based on you know legal stipulations and agreements but somehow there is always this kind of soft element of of trust and the and the third one is probably win-win or i take it furthermore actually instead of the double win now recently i would say triple win because it's not only between those parties who are actually conducting the business but the way of doing business today as we all know is that you know everybody should win from that so when when actually we are breaking a deal we should all think about how it reflects on the environment on any third parties that might be impacted and i do believe we can deliver a triple win business all across our areas Oh, hero! Well, probably I will go far beyond the stereotypical and old definition and associations of, of, uh, of heroes. So I think heroes around us today who, who give energy and positive energy into our lives and, you know, everything what we do around. So they actually influence other people and, and, and motivate other people so positive energy is you know kind of definitely one one thing and the capability to to impact much more than you know just our own uh, personal matters uh, the the second thing about heroes would be probably balance because i think in a sense today everybody is a you know, old type of struggling hero with lots of shocks and stress and, and challenging around us. So we all should fight. But those people who, who really manage to overcome the imbalances, the, the stress, the negative impact of these challenges, so who can really keep the balance for themselves, the peace of mind, are the, are the real heroes today. So what I say that, you know, instead of the fighting, sacrificing and struggling stereotypical or historical type of heroes today, I would call heroes of individuals with positive energy and the ability to, to balance off the challenges of the environment. Business, business heroes, hopefully should be kind of all of us who, <laughs> who um, uh, motive or who work in the in the in the business environment. Uh, but uh, I believe really, business heroes are those one who could think about concepts which are all good for any parties who are involved in the business plus the environment, and they do it in the way 
that uh, that they kind of constantly reflect and give back positive energies to to their environment. I I really believe, you know, that's going to build a a much better world if we do business this way and we have leaders like, like this. Okay. Well, actually, I, I uh, kind of bit of the facts. I graduated in in uh, in Hungary as an economist, but really, when the you know new market economy was uh, was opened at the beginning of the 1990s, so you know obviously I started to to work with uh, multinational companies in business area, marketing area. But the first couple of years of my career was you know clearly about with a lot of dignity, learning, learning, and and learning which you know there was a great opportunity for and I think really the the recognition of me having a long-term objective a mission and the ability to create things came after my first promotion when at the age of 29 I was promoted as the marketing director of a, of a leading international bank in, in Hungary, that was Citibank. And that was really my, my first uh, assignment as a leader, a first challenge as a strategic leader with lots of lots of learnings through lots of mistakes and failures that I committed. But that was really the time after overcoming the first leadership challenges when I really recognized that I have a much more job to do in this environment, you know, than just providing the best solutions and developing the best solutions. It's indeed about influencing people and motivating people, which is a much more difficult job. Actually, the the very first uh, leadership obstacle was just, uh, you know, in in the indeed to to overcome my own professional performance pressure uh, in order to be able to pay more attention to people around me. They were very, very hard calls. I, you know, got to leadership positions uh, very early in my in my career and I really wanted to perform very well, deliver the, the results. But there was a time when I had to stop and, uh, and recognize that it's not gonna be done by me, but it's gonna be done by a team around me. Probably, you know, every leader goes through this one but I so strongly remember those very first uh, instances when I got so to say not so nice leadership feedback and I, I, I really had to step back and you know think about kind of re- redesigning my whole approach uh, to the work and this is something where I I'm really constantly developing especially recently when you know two years ago I moved out from the classical four profit corporate environment and and joined a uh, civil organization an NGO uh, where you know obviously have uh, just in a DNA of the whole organization much more empathy and focus on people so there is still every day a tremendous learning around that how can we you know much better treat people in the business Yeah, actually, I had two very important uh, people influencing my professional uh, career. One of them was a senior woman in uh, in the organization I started to to work for as a you know kind of first leadership assignment, and uh, and she kind of you know very much taught me a lot about the opportunities and the advantages women might have in organizations, of course, in a professional way, but like it was pretty much still a man's word 
banking, international, international banking, banking in Hungary. Uh, so like very, very few women working in the organization, trying to struggle with our own challenges sometimes, or most of the times actually it was just our own perceptions about the challenges. But later on, I discovered that, you know, kind of if I sort out my self-confidence on certain issues, those challenges might not, might not even be there. And then kind of really about how can we how can we turn it to our advantage and i'm just so happy to to see it for the you know last couple of decades how much the environment changed the business environment changed in 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 terms of just you know appreciating the natural values inherent values of you know kind of any genders can can bring to different aspects of the of the business and this whole notion of diversity which was a very early stage at that that time has has developed so much so i think it's it's just so good to experience that now diversity is on the agenda everywhere and yeah we still have challenges in in some senses but at, at least in gender terms i believe now we are at least you know professional companies we are doing we are doing okay and we are very very conscious so happy to see that and the other uh, mentor was uh, was really somebody who kind of you know taught me about about change uh, because also if you tend to become much more mature in your profession you you could kind of tend to neglect that things can all the time be done better and and you can from day to day incorporate new ideas and new visions and actually creativity into your work so for for this you just have to be kind of very very consciously in practical matters separate time surround yourself with people who can bring in different aspects kind of really stimulate creative sessions uh, have have something you do differently every day so so th this kind of really helped me a lot as well to be able to to enjoy what i'm doing and renew myself through long long years so so i i strongly believe that you know creativity and innovation doesn't only help businesses but also helps individuals uh, to, you know, just to stay longer terms, very successful and, and, and content in the jobs. Okay, I, the lesson what I, I, have, I have really learned and that's pretty much related to, you know, my, my current mission and, 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 and role in this, uh, this is society which is on the side of a really helping organization where we, where we want to do good that uh, that you know business and 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 doing good is is not two separate things I, I strongly believe that you know uh, when this whole notion of CSR and sustainability came up already luckily decades ago but kind of you know as a mantra for for organizations you know still a lot of of brands and organizations and businesses did not recognize the the relevance in their everyday activities this is not a kind of tax we we have to pay as business leaders and owners to to the environment but this is something if we don't integrate into the way how we operate it's not gonna make us successful and what i learn now in my current role where in the eid i am in daily contact with those brilliant business people company owners or individuals who are actually supporting either with their knowledge their network or financial assets our activity as a as a charity that somehow it is already measurable for them and it is already 
proven that you know leading their lives doing their business and doing their everyday jobs by kind of thinking about how can this positively impact their customers the environment it's it just comes as as drinking water and and this is so nice to see and the more and more evidences you see everybody does it in their in their own ways but one thing is common for them that this is not a a side activity this is their way of way of thinking and doing business which is which is brilliant to see okay i can tell you i think the most uh, warm-hearted and most professional philanthropists i've ever ever met actually he used to be for more than a decade the head of the board of Bato Tabor, the charity organization I'm working for. His name is Peter Kulei, who is a renowned European banker, but I think really a very, very visionary uh, supporter of the society, uh, a, a great philanthropist, a kind of example, of, I believe, for, for all professionals from the, from the business area. He he has been uh, uh, helping Bator Tabor for long, long years to develop verities, kind of giving his full uh, professional focus, putting his network behind, a lot of energies, a lot of time, obviously, final support as well, but our charity couldn't be verities without him. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> a shy, shy person. I <laughs> sorry. Let's stop here. <laughs> no, no. Actually, no. I would like to be somebody who who stimulates heroes, who encourages, uh, who encourages. Uh, heroes who, who, who praises heroes you know finally I am a marketing person I am a supporter I am a supporter person so the best feeling for me if I I really really see that you know I can stimulate something good and beneficial you know kind of spreading across the business scene and the and the society.